Hi, and welcome to the Valley Wrap. Great to have you with us today. And once again, we've got Amy Isham, who's joining us all the way from St Kilda by Zoom. Good to be with you, Amy. Hi, Richard. Good to see you again. Yeah. Hey, Amy, what's it like living on the beach? We're so far from the beach in Doreen, and I sometimes think, ah, oh, I'd love to be. How close, how close to the beach are you? We still have to drive, uh, but we go down to Elwood Beach, which is just beautiful. There's all these canals on the way there. Yeah. Um, and so sometimes we've walked there and it's just beautiful. We love to, to um, there's a lovely hill. You walk up, there's actually hills. They have hills down here. Um, you climb up a hill and you can see all across, all the way down to the city and the ocean. Uh, and it's beautiful because, yeah, I've been missing, I've been in the country missing the ocean for the last five years. It's yeah, beautiful. I'm jealous already. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've been having a conversation about mental health and uh, last last week we talked a bit about um, recognising people made in the image of God, that people are valuable. Um, but today we wanted to, to take us on and uh, just be thinking a little bit more about some of the, the skills that we can, we can gain in caring for people. Tell us a bit about, um, yeah, how you think about that. Yeah, I think that we need to... Um there are three things. So there are real skills that you can gain and so that can make you feel really equipped to deal with it. And the first one is to try and understand different mental health conditions. Mm. So I think um, we can be like, oh, what's, what's that? What does psychosis mean? That's a bit scary. I don't think I'll talk to that person. Uh, but um, if you did say an introductory course like mental health first aid, which is um, often offered in the community, not only will you learn about those conditions and what that person's experience is, is like, what their behaviours are like too, and to become sort of not worried about those things. Um, so I think like obsessive compulsive disorder, we can assume that it just means that that person washes their hands a lot, but they actually have spirals of anxiety. And there are a lot of ways that we can encourage and support people um, with those conditions. So there's that gaining an understanding of those different conditions. But the second thing is to recognise that uh, to gain a biblical perspective of your role. So recognising that you are actually not meant to be their counsellor, their fixer. You're meant to be um, supporting them in their faith and discipleship. So you're being a friend, yeah. which is a really important role, but it's actually not as stressful or burdensome as perhaps you might think it is. And that's a relief, isn't it? Because I think sometimes we, as Christians, we sort of feel like I've got to fix this person and, uh, and I, I can almost end up um, in, in an unhealthy relationship where I'm feeling burdened by that. But you're saying, no, we're just part of a community of care. Yeah, and recognising that, because that's the third thing is when you realise the limits of what you can give, you start to go, well, um, there's a great GP that I could hook them up with or they might know this counsellor, this Christian counsellor's got some great, um, you know, treatment for them, or they may be even thinking about um, going on a heavier medication or, and you can really support them and encourage them, them in that. And rather than letting them become codependent on you, like they may want you around all the time because you tend to be there all the time. Yeah. Uh, so you're encouraging them to seek a network and you're destigmatizing that for them and saying, hey, look, it's normal. Um, being on antidepressants might actually help or, being on this drug might help or seeing this counsellor or this um, psychiatrist might help too. And so you give them that uh, network. and that Just like you might go to a physio to get your back fixed or something. It's just, hey, there's, there's people that um, who are professionals in this area and they can help. Yeah, and we can provide, if someone can be nervous about, oh, that counsellor is not a Christian or something, but we can help them uh, continue to build that biblical worldview around their, their, who they are as, as people in the image of God. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a verse in the Bible that um, that that kind of talks a bit about this in Galatians chapter six, verse two, where it says, um, "Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfil the law of Christ." Yeah. So that um, that idea of caring for one another, being a caring Christian community, um, doing it together, not just just one person having to feel I've got to carry the whole load, but um, doing that together is so much a part of like a gift that the church is to us that we can share in that that caring um yeah hugely helpful yeah yeah i agree because i think the interesting tension is between you're helping them carry their burdens by not actually um carrying them all for them you're, you're helping them build a sense of identity so you're carrying their burdens by not carrying their burdens you know helping them um 
gain a sense of, uh, of ownership and strength uh, and identity. Yeah. yeah, yeah, helping them to who they, they are in Christ, who they are in God as God's image bearer, that they're loved by him. And that, mm-hmm. that in itself, um, opening the Bible with people and just praying with them can be actually really important. Yeah, and I think that's it is we can um, think that when someone needs really high level care or professional care that they're not going to want to talk about God. But uh, most people really want a distraction. They want to they relish the Bible. They need to feed on, on God's word just as much as they ne- may need medication. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, we need our souls fed, don't we? We, um, we need to be hearing God's voice in every situation of life, uh, and especially in that one. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's the area that we can give um, expert, expert care because that's what we know. We know, we know God and we know his word. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Any other resources you wanted to mention to us, Amy? Well, yeah, so the Mental Health First Aid is the, the course that I did and I found it really helpful because it, I particularly did a youth mental health first aid, which was really helpful because it looked at, you know, um, uh, eating disorders and the kind of behaviours that you may help you realise that someone has one, um, self-harming behaviours and the, the reasons behind them are actually more um, are very different to the way I assume they were. So yeah. I think it can be a really helpful course to see how can I be that first line friend to that person and help them uh, find uh, more help if they need it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That's great, Amy. How about I pray? And we'll finish there. Father in heaven, uh, thank you for um, the way you've enabled Amy to be able to be part of a community of care in her own situation, uh, to be able to open the word of God with people. And Lord, I pray that that would be part of how we care for people in our church. So we don't need to be the professionals, but we can direct people to uh, to where there are special skills, uh, but also that we can be providing love and care and a supportive community where we're helping people hear God's voice in the midst of these things. And uh, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mm. Well, that's a wrap, uh, friends. We'll uh, see Amy again next week for our final in this three-part series on thinking about mental health. And we'll look forward to seeing you all at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning on Valley Live. See you then.